Hi guys, welcome to the Revive Stronger podcast. I'm your host as always, Steve Hall, and I am welcomed today by Alberto Nunez, who I think has been on the podcast twice already. I think this is a third time, so third time lucky. And today we're going to be talking about Alberto's off-season. So I think that all of our listeners, or at least the majority, will know 3DMJ, will know Alberto Nunez, um, pro-natural bodybuilder, and he is in his off-season at the moment, recently competed last season, just like myself. And we did an update on kind of how his contest prep went. And now it's kind of reconciling how so far has the off season gone. And I think from following Alberto, myself, and I'm sure lots of listeners have been following, his off season approach has been a little bit different to kind of years recent. Uh, so it'd be really interesting to hear kind of how it's compared to those. So um, Alberto, how are you doing, first of all? Man, time has flew, right? Like, you remember last year we were just grinding at it, going at it, and uh, and since our timelines are similar, I yeah. guess, um, I've I've just kept up with like your weight gain. There was a point in time where I was just ahead of you, dude. Like yeah. I was clobbering <laughs> you, you know. <laughs> and and like right now, you kind of took the lead. So it's like you have that graduating class that you come out of a prep with, and you know because if you are natural, you guys are kind of on similar timelines, right? Um, you're always gonna keep up with those people. So yeah. like everyone from our class, I'm kind of always like looking and seeing <laughs> how how they're doing. But it's been great, man. It's been great. It's uh, I, I I don't miss the stage at all, because mm-hmm. um, just because this phase is just as good in in its own way for sure. Um, I think we tend to like the prep or or make it seem like we like it more than or enjoy it more than the off season. That's because that's when other people tend to yeah. give you more positive reinforcement and they're cheering for you. Whereas like off season. It's just so long and dragged out that you got to be living it and have done it a few times to enjoy it. But it's been going good, man. Good. I just got to catch up to you. Wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, where are you sitting now? You're like one eight, mid 180s? Uh, mid 180s. I got off creatine on accident again, um, <laughs> which it's crazy. I get like three, four pounds of fullness from that thing. Wow. And Yeah, and it feels like carbs. Like it's the best way to describe it. It feels like I'm carved up, but it's not carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just it's such a it, there's no feeling to creatine. It's just something you have to go do. Yeah, it gives me um, some digestive issues. Uh, not hungry mostly. Um, so I lost a little weight, but I'm bringing it back. We're starting to eat again, and and hopefully if I can touch 190 by like late October, like all the time, yeah. we'll be in a great place. And how? What's your stage weight in comparison to that? Just give the listeners kind of a, an idea. Yeah. Um, let's see. So. I have to see a few weigh-ins under 160 yeah. um, to usually look right. Um, yeah, so under 160 for sure is when I get there. And, yeah, I am. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That's like 30 pounds over. But again, like you have all this off-season gunk that yeah. like once you start a diet, it comes off. Last prep, I think the first week I lost eight pounds. Wow. So yeah, so there you have it. So. Um, I'm not as fat as I think, and I, I have to remind myself yeah. of that. Absolutely. You have to take – when you're in prep, you take lighting on the, like, the unfavorable lighting, and now, now you're in off-season, it needs to be the favorable lighting to keep you in the – keep your head in the game. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're using filters and all that stuff <laughs> whenever I do pop up with a physique update. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you had your mini cut, and I remember how quickly it just all came off. Yeah. You know, so it's – it's when you're at the top end of your athletic settling point, it just flies off when you – you know, adhere to a hypocaloric diet. So no, exactly. So and actually, no, we're, we're, we're sorry, we're doing um, about as well as I, I hoped I was. Okay, I, I, I would be at this point weight wise, um, a little behind, but nothing crazy. And you haven't already, you haven't implemented any mini cuts or anything yourself yet, have you? No, I'm not ready to cash in yet. I'm not. There's just. I suspect there's too many cool things going on. I'm like, oh, I, I want to see what this looks like with 10 less pounds on me, but not yet. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, we're – I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I think I can win a little bit more before I decide to do it. It's, it's good for – I mean, not just to keep you in the shooting range, but also just to, like, prove to yourself that, okay, this is actual evidence that what you're doing is working, you know. Um, but, yeah, just a little bit longer, maybe by the new year, maybe. Mm-hmm. And I just brought it up because I know um, some of the, we got some questions through and I think people have seen your War of Mini Cuts video, but um, I think people have maybe interpreted that of you being kind of fully against them and they're the wrong thing to be doing. Uh, But I think you just, they just have their place. And I think it's a, 
sense of they're just being utilized too frequently, inappropriately. And so in terms of for you with mini cuts, where do you kind of see them for a bodybuilder in their off season? How, where do you place them? Mm. So for most people, the I feel that their body fat zone where they tend to make the most progress or things are the most predictable and hey not only that but like life is pretty good you know you can go out on the weekend and maybe you had a few things that aren't part of your usual and you don't come back four pounds every like that's one of the symptoms that you're maybe saying too light you know that uh i don't know if it's partially because you can't control yourself when you're having fun or it's because you're just like that sensitive to, to i guess bloat and weight gain um or weight gain via bloat but um but yeah, for most folks, where they make the most progress, where that they should be getting busy, is not necessarily the body fat. Like, it's not the look they want. You know, it's not their favorite look. And I feel that most people barely get to that point, and then they turn back. Yeah. You know, um, when I mean, I think that's what I did last off season. I think that was a major error on my part. Um, to me, my solution was. I guess stay closer so that when you, you do go through it, you don't have to go through as much of this uh, catabolic turbulence. But no, it bit me in the, in the butt. That was this last off season was probably in terms of just bottom line progress, the least amount of progress I've made. And I don't feel it has to do with training age necessarily because, mm -hmm. you know, over time you just get less and less in return. Uh, I just... I remember going up to the 190s, hanging there previously, and then coming back down, and there's always new things, like without fail. And, and already right now, I know that if I lose 10 pounds, um, my quads will have never been this good. My chest will have never been this thick. This is the best my lats have ever looked. Um, so yeah yeah and again, even for me, it's like something that it's like every once in a while I'm like, I look in the mirror and I'm like, holy fucking shit, dude, you are a professional natural bodybuilder look at you dude look <laughs> at you this looks horrible they could only see you um so we all go through that but um hey that's that's uh that's the beauty in the sport is it staying objective usually lends to some good stuff on the other end so the yeah, mind games man i think the the point you made there is rings true so much to me in that i was very similar in my last like off season I never let my weight, I think I got, the largest I got was like just over the 180s and I'm over 10 pounds heavier than that now. And that 10 pounds is like been a world of difference in terms of progress. Even how I felt just day to day, I've just felt like you feel a bit unbeatable and like almost unbreakable in some ways. You yeah. just have energy to do so much. And I guess when you're thinking about like volume being quite important, like the fact you can now perform more is probably helpful. I think like you said, there's definitely benefits to being close to your stage weight or closer so then you don't have to diet for as long. But I think it's a case of, and like you've talked about, I think in your, even when all you guys came over to London years ago, you talked about kind of the off season and strategically kind of bringing down your weight via a mini cut, the diet before the diet and kind of, I don't know, maybe that's how you approach it in future. And I guess that's how you want people to kind of look at it. But now you're letting yourself get up. You're just allowing that progress to come in. Yeah. I mean, now it's, uh, I don't know when I'm getting on stage, so I don't have to be yeah. that close. Um, so if, if I were getting up next year, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably be kind of thinking of um, setting that up or thinking about that setup you just, you just, you just talked about, which I mean, you and I, we might be in the one nineties and we might, our final destination might be, you know, somewhere in, in the similar, like, you know, one sixties, like high 150s that is your stage rate right right around there yeah my, yeah i have to get just below 160s normally i see a few of those so same thing same yeah. thing yeah uh but we're not going to start our prep here no. you know this is just this is just like the best place to get busy this is our party outfit basically yeah. um and yeah i know that when i do start the prep i will start probably like 175 yeah. you know um and maybe hopefully with one or two more pounds of, of muscle. Yeah. yeah, it sounds so discouraging, but, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's, uh, and not only that, but life is so much more pliable and flexible and, and who doesn't like to feel like a brute in the, in the, in the weight room? Like yeah. I've, it's, it's an amazing feeling. It's just as cool in its own way as like being the shredded guy in the weight yeah. room, I feel. No, 100%. And you actually end up filling out like large t-shirts rather than kind of having to wear like a medium and things. So 
<laughs> there's there's other benefits. You actually look like you're lifting clothes. <laughs> yeah, no, cosine, man, cosine. So um, how is it? How's the injury going on your kind of, you injured your forearm and that kind of, I think that disrupted some momentum, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my friend, my friends, Tina and Joey were in town. They were here visiting Leanna, Brian and I, it's like a yearly event. And, um, we took him to every cool gym in town and one of those gyms had some monkey bars. So monkey bars got me. Um, and, uh, when I was in Austin, like Andrea taught me a few tricks. So I wanted to expand on those. Um, and <laughs> the forearm didn't like it. Um, going from one bar to another bar, it just, it snapped. And, uh, it's, it's like people always talk about what it sounds like. Uh, I think it was just a very, very bad strain. There okay. was no, um, yeah, there was no, um, bruising. Nevertheless, um, I kept showing up to the gym and, and, and maybe going a bit too hard. And on two occasions in the gym, like I felt it, you know, uh, get pulled on again. So yeah, go, going from like the, the off season, like brute where everything is working. I mean, at some point this off season, that was a personal best. I hit a 485 pin squat. It was misloaded and crooked, you know, uh, but it didn't even matter. So going from like <laughs> feeling unstoppable to like, I am afraid to extend this arm. Um, and I looked into it. I'm like, is it a muscle that I can just tear? And like, I would be okay with it. But uh, no, I guess you do need it for a lot of everyday things. So we're patient. And actually, this last week's been the best week. But yeah, yeah, the whole training, you get your best training. And in, 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 I mean, you do what you can to stay healthy. But while you're in there and you're doing your things, like you shouldn't have to, you should, like it almost makes it less safe if you're thinking about, you know, like hurting this or hurting that. And I was at the point where, I just felt unbreakable. I was just yeah. going in there lifting and to have this happen. Um, it's like, it's like, mm, I don't, yeah, I don't want this to be a reoccurring theme this off season. Um, so yeah, it humbled, it humbles you for sure. So it humbled me and we're, <laughs> we're going to stick to just bodybuilding. Yeah, <laughs> no, I see that completely. Cause I always, I think I taught some of my clients and you are you're the same, you have general pop clients and they do other things. And I'm always thinking like, man, if I just did anything, I just feel like I wouldn't have the capacity for it. But that's because we're so specific about what we're trying yeah. to achieve. Um, and actually I spoke, we were speaking off air and I said I didn't have any injuries. And actually I, I just reminded me of something I did have. I don't know if you've ever had it yourself, but uh, an exertion headache. Um, they're called like thunderclap headaches or something mm -hmm. similar to that. So yeah, I mean, I had that and I was the same. I was still going into the gym, trying to do something. You can't really get away of doing anything when you have one of those. Yeah. Um, so it's just... Cool. Like I said off air, I feel like injuries is kind of like sometimes they're kind of like when rather than if. And I think small mm -hmm. injuries, like big injuries are one of those that hopefully you can completely avoid if you to kind of do yeah. things smart. Um, so at the moment, I, there was a question that came through that was from Mike Sad, and he was asking about kind of your session setup and he was more so asking about how do you progress volume and intensity mm. during microcycle to microcycle mesocycle to, me to mesocycle and i don't know if you've got anything that's different to past off season mm. or anything you're trialing out at the moment uh, how are you attacking that berto mm. okay um really quick uh, speaking of headaches i've never oh, yeah. had one in my life ever no headaches full stop ever like wow. I, I the concept of someone's head hurting is like the weirdest thing to me it's like is there a hole in your head yeah um knock on wood um it was like a, it's like a stabbing the the exertion headaches like a someone stabbing you in the back oh it's awful yeah. oh yeah no that that's uh I've choked myself out with a front squat that's probably the closest thing with <laughs> yeah. the bar rolls and the room turn, turns dark for a minute but yeah, no, I've, I've, I've had a few people who've, uh, who've dealt with that and yeah, okay. it's, it interrupts things for sure. Um, shoot setup off season setup. Um, so I've gone back to a system that I used. It's funny cause it's all kind of the same thing. It's always 80% of the time, like upper lower, you right. know, um, unless, um, scheduling has me doing things a bit differently, but it's, it's that it's been that way. Um, and what I've done is, so I did this in 2013, I did it part of 2015 and it, it's kind of playing off. Um, so I have kind of a silly work capacity, I feel, um, 
and first of all, to, to make what is work capacity, I think most people like they, they, they think it's like, oh, you can pull a sled really well. He gets really sweaty and just does a lot of like, like useless volume. That's what people think of when they think of work capacity. Um, it's uh, best way to describe the the, uh, the ability to maintain a certain level of performance. Yeah. Um, say throughout a constant, throughout a certain exercise, it just, it takes longer for me to like lose reps on a movement. Um, so what, what I do is oh, the way the system goes is I, I just basically, I have draw, uh, cutoffs with exercises where I get to a certain point that if I lost X amount of reps, I'm done. So sometimes say on an incline bench press, it can be, I can be there for six sets. And then on a day where like my body is like, you know, still loading and still doing its thing, it might be three sets. So, um, I just, I, I keep getting back to the point that it's like, man, as much as I feel that I am so precise with my, my movements and I am, you know, very good at getting the most out of every rep. I just need so much more volume than the average person. Mm -hmm. And when I look at like my history of athletics, it's it's always it's always kind of been there. Like I was a pretty good 400 meter um, sprinter, and that was because I could just go 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 go. And you know the the engine. Um, I wish it wasn't this way. I wish it was more like Jeff. Like Jeff, uh, yeah. my colleague Jeff Alberts. Like <laughs> he can have a 10 set like training session and like that's good. And if he pushes it to 12 for too many weeks, he, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's coming down with a fever. Um, so the systems is, it's, it's been a fairly simple one, upper, lower. Um, for a few weeks, I just ramp up the volume where basically allow, I allow myself to have more drops in reps per set before cool. I close it. And then at the end, just to kind of cash in and taper, I, um, I increase the RPE, but I lower the amount of reps that I'm allowed to lose per exercise. So it makes for some long sessions sometimes, but also when it's just not there, they're really short. Yeah. And, uh, so it's just kind of, uh, it's, <laughs> that's the thing with auto regulations, like you got to tell the truth. So that's, yeah. that's my setup. It's just an upper lower. Was that clear? No, I, I think it was clear. And I, I really, I think a lot of people get a bit confused about volume and how much they should be doing. And I think what the take home from you there is, I mean, individual, you're someone who has a high work capacity. Some people, and I, like I'm the same as you, I think I, I have a high work capacity. I was always more of a longer distance runner. Not that mm -hmm. I was a bad sprinter, but always mm -hmm. been able to just repeat performance and just keep yeah. going. And I'm always envious of those who kind of, they see, they do a set of 10 and then it's eight and then it's like six and you're like, right, okay, yeah, yeah you, you can't really do many reps or many sets rather. So, uh, and then kind of your auto-regulation is built within it. So kind of you're picking the appropriate amount of volume that you're doing at a particular time, but you've got a progressive overload system in there where you're allowing yourself to be more fatigued in future, basically. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounded like. Yeah, exactly. And you can't argue with it because when you lost X amount of reps, like you're done, that's yeah. it. So it uh, once you get a feel for it, it's uh, yeah, it puts yourself, it puts you in the right place at the right time. Um, but so far, I'm loving it, and I've been running it for about three weeks now, and it's cool. I don't know if it's in my head, but you know how it is. Like you're yeah. like, it's working. I it's can a new see program. it. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any particular movements at the moment? I know uh, you went through a phase of seal row and now it's like the pedlay row is taken over. Is there any particular movements that you've this off season versus other off seasons that's been really like productive for you or how do you balance mm -hmm. things? I know for myself now, once you get a bit more advanced, it's the balance of like, if you're high bar squatting, deadlifting, these things just take their toll on you. Are you picking particular movements for a particular reason there? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I still love the barbell because I feel that it's a fundamental skill that everyone should learn. If you know how to work a barbell, you're going to be able to get on any leg press. You're going to be able to like to do pull downs and rows, right? So uh, I'm still very pro like, hey, learn how to grip a barbell. Learn how to do all these wonderful things with uh, like it is – it's like this uh, – yeah, it's like this uh, – mode of transportation of like, like potentially like never ending progressive overload. Like you can micro load that thing forever. Um, you never run out of weight for like 99.9% .9 of us. Um, unless your name's Ray Williams, you will not run out of weight. So, um, so yeah, the, um, the, the barbell I love and that still plays a major role in my training because I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a movement freak to a certain extent. You know, I love to be able to, B60 and bearing front squats like in the 300s just because it, it's like, hey, that's a healthy dude that, that you know, that, uh, you know, still can can get around. Uh, but more than ever, I think I am 
man, I'm falling in love with machines just because, you know, we talk about, for example, yeah, say a front squat, like, you know, the, your rack position is a limiting factor. Your legs aren't even close to done. And I think with a lot of, uh, a lot of free weight movements, there's other imperfections there that can potentially take away from the volume you are able to generate sometimes. Um, so for example, on leg press, like it makes me rethink RPE nines that I've felt on the squat because it's kind of a whole body, you yeah. know, RPE nine. Whereas with a leg press, man, it's, you can keep uh, going. You, <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's sets that you're like, I thought it was nine, five reps ago based on like how, <laughs> You know, I actually, I, it felt to me, but, um, but yeah, I think more machine work and I think is that's, that's going to be the biggest difference this off season is just way more machines. I still take pride in my strength. I have some strength goals with the free weights and I still want, you know, respect from like the power lifting hood, but more than ever, it's, 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 if you find a machine that just feels good, yeah. like just do it and do a lot of it. I feel. Yeah, definitely. I, I can see the same benefits of machines like going the difference between a hack squat to a barbell squat like there's a lot of difference in terms of the systemic kind of fatigue you feel from that oh, it doesn't yeah. beat you up anywhere as much but the quads get worked to hell on a hack squat so same with leg press you can just lock in and go so um yeah, i can definitely see that sentiment there especially for a bodybuilder it just makes a lot of sense to utilize machines in that way but having the barbell basics i agree i think it, it just even from a sentiment of it's enjoyable they're accessible everywhere it's mm -hmm. just a thing that you can keep loading and progressing seeing your progression on and then you can make up volume elsewhere at times i think that's a, a great approach a lot of people like yeah. to pick one versus the other but obviously you're utilizing both and that kind of makes sense yeah and there's some people out there that you know they're just going to look so good with a barbell movement that you can keep them there you know uh, you know people with the right leverages it's like that's that's that looks as good as any hack squat just stick to that um but yeah you know i think the main thing with bodybuilding is if it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel natural it feels like again the the list of things i go through is um does um you know does it hurt first of all if it hurts don't do it secondly is like does it feel like um it's you against the weight or you against the weight and your body you know like you want it to be just you against the weight um and yeah, I think last but not least, uh, you feel like you can be progressive with this for like a long, long time. And we've all met machines and movements that, that feel that way and then movements that are the exact opposite. Yeah. But because everyone else is doing it, it's like, you know, you feel like you need to do it when yeah. that's furthest thing from the truth. Are there any movements that you kind of you're good at and that you're strong at and that feel good, but you're kind of removing them because you don't need that and you need to progress in other areas? Mm. Um. I've been so tempted to get strong at dumbbell presses again. Yeah. Um, just because when it's on, I can I can press the world with those. Uh, so my best PR on that is I've done the 160 pound dumbbells for a set of four. Nice. Um, mind you, I was like 205, but like I would like to, you know, like do that one more time. But at the same time, it's like like it, it's gotten to the point. Where it's like I need to focus on strength or or growth like yeah, yeah. they are that different at this point i can i don't want to get distracted so maybe we might do that at some point maybe if i'm nice and fluffy just kind of have it on the side have a strength cycle going at like 80 percent um but um but i'd say more than anything i'm trying to figure out uh how to sneak in the crazy amounts of volume that i feel i need at this point again like almost two decades of training which is insane and then you Put in that high work capacity there so it's been kind of like you mentioned with the with the squatting is like three sets of 15 on a squat whoa you know that's that's <laughs> that's gonna suck yeah. even if you're hitting like seven and eight rps that's gonna suck um whereas i can like press it's like that's quite enjoyable i'll i'll, I'll get a great pump and yeah. you know like i won't feel tr totally trash so big thing has been trying to figure out how do i get all this volume in a way that leaves the least amount of systematic dents mm -hmm. um and it's just been it's been machine work and no one can appreciate prs on me like no one cares no. but uh <laughs> but but uh but it's so easy and straight it's it's so practical to rack up like progress in on on those sort of contraptions so yeah. that's probably the biggest difference we're going yeah we're becoming a, a circuit monkey i guess and are you do you do any specialization i know you've run those in the past are you doing any of that at the moment because I guess putting some on the back burner that are kind of stronger points, like your legs. 
You know, you know, since since I feel that maybe the last ten months or so, I was giving myself too much leeway in regards to like how much how much volume I thought I could progress with. I'm like, right, let me just run what I feel like I can handle head to toe. Yeah. Um, you know, stay under sleeping, stay under eating. Um, believe that you can freaking do this. I think that's super important. Mm -hmm. um, there's something about the happy-go-lucky, not overthinking about yeah. things meathead and why they're successful. Um, usually, you know, there's genetics, but, you know, I think how you frame things is super important. Um, so we're running a very symmetrical system head to toe. Um, and I swear to you, Steve, like three weeks in, like there's there's – all sorts of new things that just weren't there and maybe a lot of it's just you know storing more fuel in the muscles because of the added volume but it's i don't know it feels right it feels right um yeah so everything's pretty symmetrical head to toe it hasn't been this way in years and i don't think it's mm -hmm. going to be this way for much more than another four or five months at some point yeah you could only do you only bring up so many things at once but uh but yeah it's been fun i feel like i'm like an, I'm an intermediate again i guess and you kept, did you have any, what was your training right before this? Was there like a, did you have a lower volume period or anything or what is it? I'm wondering if there's a reason why it just feels so fresh. Cause I think sometimes you can go for like a strength cycle, then you come to hypertrophy. It's like, ah, now everything feels like brilliant. Uh, did anything precede this to make it feel better or? Uh, before this, I was maybe hitting maybe a total of, on the things that I was focusing on, about 10 to 15 sets per week. Okay. Um, and I just, I upped it to uh, an amount that I have handled in the past, which it's kind of a risque jump when you hear it, but it's like closer to like 30. Right. Like 30 sets per body part per week. And I mean, the first week or so sucked, but like afterwards, it's just like now I'm all caught up and I feel good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, very, very, like doubled the volume basically. But I had gone into actually old logs from like 2006 and I'm like, oh, I've worked with this before. So it's not like it's something new. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like muscle memory. I like hear that term thrown all the time. So it's not a completely novel stimulus. It's just that I think in the past when I, um, in those, those days when I was doing that much volume, my technique wasn't great. The systems were kind of, uh, um, not very good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I wasn't mindful of all the other things that contribute to recovery. So yeah. So yeah, no, we're taking a risk and we'll see where I'm at. And yeah, coming off an injury and I'm doubling volume almost pretty much, but it feels right. And I'm only doing things that I feel are like almost like custom made for yeah. me in terms of movements. Yeah. I think that's an important point you say, because not only are you utilizing more machines, but things that are, you can do good volume with, because I know there's some people who are doing stuff that maybe doesn't fit their body that well. And that limits the amount of volume they can do with it anyway because after a certain number of sets they end up getting pain so if you're utilizing like a squat and a leg press versus just a squat you're going to be able to just eke out that little bit more via your quad so that makes good sense now that's really exciting someone who is as advanced as you is already feeling like they can like, appreciate from full body growth which is cool yeah yeah you know i guess like i always go back to this and like when i'm analyzing what i'm doing because you know we all have <laughs> We're all biased in our own way, but there's, do you remember that old powerlifting, like rhetorical question about like, if you needed to squat 600 pounds, you know, the mafia kidnapped your family, something absurd like <laughs> that. Into your head. Would you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Would you squat once a week? You know? Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Right. Like, would you squat once a week? If that's what, for some reason, like, I guess the mafia, they were fans of powerlifting. They wanted to see you squat 600 pounds. Right. So, um, like when it comes to muscle growth, it's like that's something you have to ask yourself consistently as you look at all the things you're doing. So whether it be like I cut too early every time because I start to feel uncomfortable, um, I'm throwing these other things into my training, you know, that maybe when I think about it, you know, again, maybe I shouldn't be deadlifting because I'm not put together for it. Maybe I should do some other sort of hinging movement, right? Um, yeah, you look at everything you're doing across across the board and if it's like not like – so I guess the question is, if the mafia kidnapped your family and they're like, you need to put on five pounds of muscle by the end of this year or you're not seeing them again, it's like, what would you change, right? Yeah. Would you do that cut early? You know, would you still be doing these movements that just keep getting you hurt and really you don't feel like they're as productive as like others claim they are for them? Uh, would you change anything? And that's, yeah, that's, that's something that I run through my head every few months when I look at what I am doing. 
Yeah, I think that's a really good thought process. I guess it's ultimately specificity. Like, is what is this part of your program achieving the end result that you want? If it isn't fully achieving that, then maybe have a think about it. And especially for yourself, you're more advanced. It has to be, like you were saying, you can't kind of pursue good strength goals and hypertrophy goals. You need to kind of pick your pick where you want to go for a period of time. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm glad you're kind of, everything's going in a really good direction because I know you hit that hurdle and things were kind of pulling you back a little bit. Do you have a, I know you said 190, would you ever push over that 200 mark again if things look right, I guess? Yeah. It doesn't look horrible. That's the thing. But you know how it is. Like contests, you can't help it. You're like, there's fat in these crevices. And yes. like, most people don't even know there's a crevice there. Yeah, um, yeah it doesn't look bad. I, I think I would only do it if if it made me super strong. Just because being super strong is, is fun. So I haven't been over 200 in, in forever. And it, previous years, like early 20s when I would do it, everything would just move um everything would just move exactly how i wanted so i would like one more shot at being decently strong i'm never going to specialize in strength yeah. no but you know i guess those like bodybuilder prs right like yeah. you know being able to do five sets of whatever with you know dumbbell pressing things like that mm -hmm. um so yeah i i, I want to get up to 200 uh, cool. just at this point like the thought of eating that much is just not yeah. very appealing <laughs> i'm not surprised i've it's taken me a long time to get to this point where I've actually felt kind of, I don't want to eat anymore. Like I, I legit don't want to. And it's taken me a long time to get there. I don't think I felt it at all in my previous off season because I just kept mm -hmm. myself a bit arbitrarily lean. And that was something I was going to ask you. And people have kind of, in terms of body fat percentages, they shouldn't go over. They have 15% in their head and um, they think they, sh yeah, they shouldn't go over this. Otherwise they're going to cut their progress short. And obviously people talk about individualization of that if you're someone who's leaner generally that might be like a good guideline or a bit less than that even but even for you and myself i I'm, i can hold a lean physique and feel okay mm -hmm. and you can hold a lean physique and feel pretty good but you've pushed up this high um so i think it's i don't know i don't think i have a question or anything to say apart from just highlighting that fact that even people that can get and stay lean can still appreciate from getting even bigger yeah, no, I, I agree with that. I, it's just because you can do it. I mean, doesn't mean that like when it comes to the specifics of your sport that that is what's best for you. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I've I've noticed that athletes who are able to stay leaner when they do push like towards that end, they actually get some fantastic results. Like it's it's I've seen that quite a few times where, um, you know, a few folks who like if they wanted to, they could stay in the single digits like most of the time. And, you know, I think I would if I was like done with this and I was just OK with kind of looking a certain way. But that's, you know, if you want to maximize things, you're going to have to go through these like non ambiguous cycles. Right. Yeah. And um, and yeah, it's I, I, again, like you last off season, I was such a waste of time like when i stop and i think about it it was probably the worst off season uh for me personally ever since i decided to compete um and and yeah i go back to the one before and i just remember like more than half of that off season i remember looking in the mirror and i'm like i don't like this but it's doing its job you know and uh that's something that i'm i'm reminding myself of now i just i'm kind of running i'm not running out of years but i'm about to hit peak stride pretty soon here and i want to do everything right to yeah. make sure that peak stride is exactly the way i envisioned when i was in my early 20s no 100 percent, i can understand that and especially i don't know what your future plans are but like in terms of commitments and things it's not i'm not as fortunately i'm a bit younger than you but i'm not got kids and things coming in my way at the moment so mm. it's like i'm self-employed i can get to the gym frequently like now i need to dominate because i know in future years there's going to be other commitments that are kind of come in, in play and kind of stop that so and i can definitely appreciate you kind of taking your stride whilst you can um something we did get asked was um in terms of your diet people kind of see bits on your instagram and i i think maybe i don't know if it paints a clear picture of how your eating goes but there's questions of do you pick and eat in a surplus like every mm. day or is it up and down um, I don't think you even actually count macros at the moment off season and they asked also kind of 
how how does it look versus a contest prep diet like are you is it still clean or like quote unquote clean do you allow yourself more kind of like alcohol and things how's it looking compared to that okay um no i'm definitely not tracking but you know we went over this during the contest prep like i had a general idea i was tracking but there were no set set numbers you know i would sometimes squeeze a bicep in the mirror and i'm like okay you need less food you need more food so you get to that point eventually where you, you, you've, you've done this long yeah. enough that you kind of know what you need and it's, it's more dynamic and you can, you know, yeah, you can fulfill your, your actual needs like in a much more in a like, yeah, time efficient way, I feel, uh, as opposed to committing to some intake that works most of the time. So that's what I think most athletes should get at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, but you need to go through that stage where you are tracking and yeah. I've, I've tracked consistently for three years at some point. So uh, I earned my stripes. So anyone who out there who's like, okay, this sounds like great, just eat. No, you need to, you know, first of all, have done this for a while. And, and you know, like even when you're not tracking, like you yeah. still think about what, what it is that you're doing and what you've done the meals previous and how your day is going, right? So, no, right now I stop and I eat a thousand calories four times a day. That's basically my, my, uh, my diet, um, it's a it's a plant based diet, which is I don't think most people even like like. But plant based doesn't mean like I am vegan. It just means it. I think everyone should be on a plant based diet. Like the majority of your food should come from fruits and vegetables. Um, so yeah, I, I don't take pictures of that because that's just not very appealing. But I make these like large bro bowls every day, and like whatever fruits I got on sale, they just get thrown in there. Uh, tons of frozen veggies. So that's like. Uh, the the base of my diet high protein plant based diet uh, about four thousand calories a day and uh, and yeah I think if anything adherence at this point is I could always make about four thousand but there's certain days where I feel like I know for sure I need more and it's hard to get past that you know that's uh, that's probably been the hard part like I've even kind of cut down on my walks outside because I just I don't want to eat anymore yeah. Um, so that's that's the system and it has me gaining at a rate that's pretty appropriate. I'd say some months are faster than others and I'm like mm-hmm. okay with that. Like some people want things to be like that one pound a month, that one pound a month and if it's more or less by just a smidge they freak out. To yeah. me it's more I like to work backwards like this is my end goal and like I'm going to get there in say 10 months and some months are going to be faster, some months are going to be slower. But it drives you less crazy that way. So my goal was November. I wanted to be 195. Um, I'm going to be just under that, I feel. But, mm-hmm. hey, it's pretty close. And there were some months where I gained three pounds, some gain- months where I gained half a pound. You know, it wasn't the same all the time, but there was some sort of net weight gain every month for the most part. Um, so that's that's that system. And aside from that, yeah, it does allow for extra curriculars. Uh, although one thing last off season that I did that this year I'm going to cut down on mm-hmm. just a smidge is the alcohol consumption. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Just because you know training is crazy enough. Yeah, especially right now where if there is one Thursday evening where I want to go have more than one beer with a few friends, like I can feel that dent. Yeah. You know, in that week's recovery. So. Um, I'd much rather make that an infrequent thing. I love my wine. I love my beer, but I love bodybuilding a whole lot more. So maybe every two, three weeks is going to be the going rate from here on. Cool. Yeah. I think the idea of having that plant-based diet makes complete sense. And I think a lot of people listening to this might, I don't know, the ones who maybe know you a bit less and maybe on the outside, maybe are like, Oh, Alberto eats like that. I didn't expect that. Uh, so I think that's good for them to hear because even when you are consuming large amounts of calories it's not it's not an excuse then not to consume kind of the right things quote mm-hmm. unquote um and that, that's actually yeah a great and refreshing thing to hear do you do obviously it's four thousand calories so it's a lot is there anything you do with those fruits and vegetables to make it easier for you to consume those um you know once i start eating fruit it's not that hard like i, I just really enjoy it. so again like eat foods that you like especially when you're overeating um so get them early for sure, especially with the vegetables, because if I don't get them early at the end of the day, like it's like the inverse of when you're dieting. When you're dieting, you want to end with this yeah. huge salad, right? And right now it's like get it early because you've just fasted for seven, eight hours. Um, so the veggies, because they're kind of rough, I get those early. But the fruits are just – they're so easy and I just – I snack on them all day. Yeah. Um, and it's like the variety is crazy, especially, especially here in the States. Like the produce is – we're really lucky. So yeah. like – 
you can you can like every week you can try a batch of like completely different fruits so um so no i'm 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 loving like the i am being a little bit more aware in regards to what i am consuming in terms of like how i guess how nutritious it is but it almost feels like you're stopping to like hug yourself a few times a day you know like you're doing all these things to you know take care of business to take care of others you know and it's kind of like i get to stop have my kiwis have my apple have my banana and it's like oh you know you're you're you're, you're hugging your your favorite person self love and yeah exactly so do something nice for yourself a few times a day and that's that's what it feels like yeah i like that and i get it sounds like that's obviously it sounds like you're taking more care of that is there anything else like you talked about recovery and making sure that's more important is there anything in this off season that you've kind of been taking more care of i know for myself like sleep is something that i've just i've been learning more about it and realizing mm. it's like a non-negotiable for me now i just have to get enough sleep otherwise i'm screwed so is there anything like that that you've kind of found this off season has just helped yeah um so i get decent sleep throughout the week um seven eight hours usually um but on friday i've kind of made that like my sleep briefie day <laughs> and i will like have i will yeah close like like no light getting in i wear a mask yeah. um only on that day and kind of unconventional but we can do that here in colorado i'll smoke some weed so some marijuana <laughs> So it's really been my relaxing. one once it's it's been my once a week thing. Yeah, I don't they they have the candy. That's what they do. Um, so I just have that, and it just knocks me out since I'm such a lightweight to it, basically. So it keeps me asleep, and I do that once a week, and I've done it for the last three months, and it's been like, yeah, really good. Cool. Is that? It was funny. We actually got a question through that was asking about weed and um, how does that. Uh, come into when you're trying to compete and things like that I wasn't actually going to bring it up but now you've brought up weed I'm going to ask you yeah how does does that have any implications for competing um it's I think so long as you don't you're not stoned during the the poly (laughs) you're okay I think that's the rule with that one (laughs) yeah um the biggest issue I feel is that like people get the munchies it's it's hard to adhere to your diet so um, so yeah, that's probably helpful the biggest right issue. now for you. <laughs> right now would be, yeah, it would be helpful. Um, and it's perfectly legal in my state. So that, that, that's cool. But no, it's just a once a week thing on my sleep, uh, sleep refeed day. Um, and yeah. And then I have like the whole weekend to rest if everything goes according to plan. Um, so come Monday, I'm like ready to go. And I, I, I feel a huge difference when I allow myself like to just binge sleep once a week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I think a lot of people are probably similar. Like five days of the week, they they've got work commitments and things like this. Mm-hmm. So maybe they get the. I always say like six hours, less than six hours, you're probably cutting it a bit. But if you can get the six plus hours, then on the weekend have a bit more. I don't think you can make up for lost sleep necessarily, but it certainly helps to kind of refuel you. And you talked about um, obviously we've gone over a bit of like the weed and obviously um, creatine you're taking. Is there any other supplements you're utilizing in your off season to like <laughs> help? <laughs> All right, so so we're on the marijuana increase stack though. Um, um, no, no, I think that's the, you know the the, the basic stuff yep. like the the fish oils for sure, the creatine. Um, my caffeine consumption has been the lowest it's ever been, so that's been pretty cool. Nice. Um, so when I when I take it, it works it works really well. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, that hope. thing is so <laughs> so amazing. Um, no, that's 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 basically been the backbone of uh, of my. You, you know, when I won my pro card, I think it was eight years of training, and I had spent four hundred dollars in supplements. Like when I tallied up everything over the course of those eight years. Nice. Um, so I thought about it. I'm like, oh wow, like like back then when I would tell people that, they would be kind of amazed, and I didn't see it. It's just how it was. Yeah. Um, but now, like I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, they they definitely do help. Um. I, I do feel that if you take the right things, like it, yeah, it can be an extra three to five percent. But if you're not doing that, you know, ninety five percent on your own, the other ninety five percent, like via everything else, it, like the sleep, the eating, the training, it's not going to matter. So it's like, okay, you between everything, you're at fifty four percent. That's you know, it's not worth it in that case. The supplementation. 
yeah get your ducks in a row before you consider any of that and i think it's, it's refreshing to hear that actually you are just doing the basics um very much like myself there's nothing unless there's yeah there's fads that come through all the time you see them and they're appealing to us people who really care about their results mm-hmm. but sometimes i and i always rings true when i think back to what eric said about supplements it's like you don't know unless there's a lot of research on it you don't know if there's something that's going to come out and say it's now negative and that always kind of made me think right okay even if there's a few promising studies down the line there could be ones that are even negative and then you've got the collection mm-hmm. of evidence and yeah then you've done, you've shot yourself in the foot potentially so it's just safer not to the placebo effect though with the subs uh, that is what that's what you know does like I, I do true. believe in that one um i remember i took glutamine back oh the worst like way <laughs> back when and i just i i cherry picked what i was reading and somewhere along there it said like just it uh, elevates this this and this by like just some crazy number um they have if that were true you'd have steroid like effects <laughs> but I took the glutamine and because I was taking the glutamine, I remember, I just remember that placebo, like it was one of my best like training cycles ever. Um, and uh, yeah, it was because I felt that like my growth hormone was like at a certain level or whatever, you know, um, whatever I thought. But, but yeah, I think there's other ways to do the whole placebo thing with yourself. Like we talked about earlier about like framing your mind and, yeah. and um, you know, it's kind of like the same way like you and I maybe view a, RPE 10, you know, um, like we view it very differently relative to just a person who's at the gym, you know, um, you know, it's, it hurts, it's stressing, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, but we do it like it's good for us. And we're absolutely having a ball in the middle of that. So you can do that with a lot of, like a lot of things from a behavioral standpoint. Um, and yeah, it's, it's crazy how, how it all does start up here, you know, like, again, like, remember contest prep, like you look at yourself and, and you look great. But on that day, like you look back and you're like, man, this picture here, I remember thinking I look this, this and that way. Well, like you can do the exact opposite and like in your head, like make yourself some sort of like juggernaut when it comes to everything you're doing and all the procedures that you need to get done in order to get to where you want to. So yeah, it's, it's definitely worth like investing in learning how you tick so that you can use that to your own advantage. Yeah, it's reminded me of a study that recently came out. I think it was, I can't remember who it was, but it was to do with a placebo of uh, steroids. A group of people were given a placebo for it and they gained more than the other group. And I was just like, man, that sounds so good, but I wouldn't want to believe that I ever took them because then I'd just fail, even if I hadn't taken them. It's just like, that's completely fucked. I can't do that now. (laughs) Can't someone fake give me steroids, but not me believe it, but then it just wouldn't work. (laughs) Oh, those guys must have been so pissed when they found out. <laughs> <laughs> they just, I actually, I think I might have, I don't know if this is actually true, a study ages ago where that happened and then they lost what they'd gained because then they knew it wasn't, that's, that's, yeah, that's how strong the mind can be. I recall that. I recall that. Yeah. yeah. It's nutty. Yeah. So what you're saying there about visualizing things, yeah, it's, it's incredibly powerful. So I really like that. Uh, you can trick yourself into doing anything, you know, just make sure it's the right things, you know? Yeah. Um, the the final question I have for you, Berto, is actually a while back you were sharing kind of other bodybuilders who kind of inspire you, who you think need more kind of, I don't know, social media presence and who you want to share them a little bit. Is there any bodybuilders at the moment in their off season that you're looking at and thinking they're doing a good job and you'd like to give them a shout out potentially or maybe inspire you? Yeah. Um, so I'd say right off the bat, I'd I'd like to kick it off with Ryan Doris. He's, um, he's so genetically gifted, but man, he works so hard. He works so hard and he like wants to know what the nerds are doing, you know? So, um, so that's, that's, that's why he's so unique and he's so special is the fact that, yeah, he, he's got like world champion genetics. Like if you heard, you know, like if you got the news that Ryan won WNBF Worlds, you wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, so Ryan is, is definitely, I think someone who, if you are a freak, like you should kind of model yourself after, um, very humble so as well. Oh yeah, 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 and and you know, also like another thing is like we we talk about like the clueless meathead. Like Ryan is like when it comes to perspective and yeah. like you know all things up here, he is he's the freaking man. Um, he yeah, people call him like the Kai Green of natural bodybuilding. And I'm like no 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 because like when Kai tells you something, you're like 
I didn't get any of that. Like, that wasn't <laughs> even the question. So, um, so yeah, with uh, with Ryan, that's that's been that's been great to see him come back. Um, let's see. There's one. I have a list. Um, actually, kind of on the other end of it, like very gifted, but Mark uh, Claxton. I'm oh, not yeah. saying his. Yeah, uh, I think. BMBF I think that's so. That homie. Um, I just I love to watch him train when he's dieting because he trains like he's not dieting. You know, um, you know the majority of us when we are going through those phases where it's like the hardest like to get any sort of productive training done. This is where it's like most important for you to like keep it at a certain yeah. level. And uh, seeing him go, he's like I think like three weeks out at this point has just been like ridiculous. Like he's it it looks almost like his off season. So I like to pride myself in the fact that I can keep a lot of my off season strength when I am dieting. Yeah. Um, but this dude takes the cake. Like he is just somewhere else. Um, so yeah, those are those are my my two guys at this year that I'm not doing it. I'm kind of like looking over at them and for you know slightly different reasons. But yeah. Both guys, it should be, they should get their props. Yeah, I, I, we interviewed well, we, I interviewed Ryan a few months ago, and um, his, it's just why well, you see his philosophy and everything he talks about. He's very different to what a lot of the genetic elite kind of their their mindset and the way they think about things. He's very different, and it is quite refreshing because I sometimes with the genetic elite, you can almost say they've got their potentially even despite what they've done not because of and i don't really feel that that is the same case for ryan it's kind of like everything he's done is still been thought out and it's not just he just goes in there and doesn't think about it because he can do that he actually also thinks about it so i'm really excited he's competing pretty damn soon as well isn't he yeah yeah this weekend so that that'll be a good one um who's competing at that show uh so the ryan definitely one of the favorites but uh there's a few so very good yeah wasn't there Brandon uh, Wattis is going to be doing it. Yeah, Brandon uh, Wattis. Um, Meshach, I think is how you say his name. Have you seen him? Is he European? Uh, no, I think he lives in the States. Oh, okay. But he, he's, he, uh, I think he came over from Africa. Uh, oh, and yeah, I think you been, shared a photo of him on your story. Little Huge. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like that, that guy is ridiculous. He... He, I, I want to see him and Ryan uh, against each other because one thing about Ryan is that he compares very, very well. Uh, Cleveland Thomas looks like you know someone just like blew air into his muscles. And I remember <laughs> the KC show uh, when they were up there for the overall. I'm like, oh wow! Like in some shots, you're actually like thicker than Cleveland Thomas. That hardly ever ha- like Cleveland can be like the even when he was he would compete like somehow he get to the lightweights for for the like, for the, the the show like you would have the middleweight you'd have the heavyweight and you look at these guys and like Cleveland Thomas would just look like if you were to strip all the muscle off the bone and put it on a scale like Cleveland would have far more <laughs> than anyone else there uh, but Ryan was like right up there with nice. them so I'm I'm anxious to see what Ryan's gonna look like he's. He's my favorite. I'm going I'm to say I got Ryan this weekend. That's like the first big show this, this year. That's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And I know this isn't even his only show. He's competing again, isn't he? After, like pretty soon after it. So, yeah, he's going to do yeah. well, I hope. Yeah, awesome. He's taking it on tour. I have no more questions for you, Berto. It's been great talking about your off-season. I think people have probably learned a lot. And no doubt we're going to get inundated by even more questions about things. But um, I'm sure we'll get you on again if if you do us the pleasure. And, yeah, just a big thank you for coming on. A thank you for being out there and sharing your progress and kind of continually learning yourself. It's kind of really refreshing to see even people who have been doing it years are still learning new things and new approaches that maybe it's stuff you even did in the past that now you're still benefiting from because yeah, I think we all go through it. So it's nice to hear about it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I enjoy being on this podcast. It's, it's become a, a cult classic within like our community. So I appreciate what you guys have done with this. Uh, the, constant like wonderful content you guys have and uh you know being on here is it's it's gone to the point where it is a privilege so i appreciate it dude no thank you so much and i mean i probably don't need to say it but if people want to learn more about berto obviously instagram is where you're most active that i see but also your youtube so the teeth team 3dmj youtube is brilliant and you can also get their podcast there so if you listen to this you better be listening to the team 3dmj podcast as well because they're coming out with you got a new season going at the moment which is brilliant yep. Um, I missed it for a while there, but it's great to have it back. And 
the chats there are really refreshing because it's hearing all expert coaches have different perspective on different questions, which is just so nice. It's kind of like a round table, but for 3DMJ every time. So yeah, thank you guys for doing that as well. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Cool. Guys, we'll catch you soon and uh, take care. Thanks.